Born on April 29, 1934 in Tiwi, Albay. He is the eldest in the seven children of Luz Ataiza Salazar and Irino Salazar, his father being the first tire in their town. He went to San Beda College where he finished his primary education as valedictorian in 1947 before going to Albay High School, which will become Bicol State University for his secondary education. Salazar then proceeded to enter University of the Philippines Diliman where he took a Bachelor of Arts in History. Graduated in 1955, he was the first summa cum laude of the history program of UP. Salazar then proceeded to enter University of the Philippines Diliman where he took up Bachelor of Arts in History. Graduated in 1955, he was the first summa cum laude of the history program of UP. Salazar studied at the University of the Philippines in Manila from 1950 to 1956 and graduated with a Ph.D. in Ethnology in Sorbonne University de Paris in 1968. Salazar could speak and write in various languages including Spanish, French, German, Russian, Bahasa, among others. He wrote a dissertation that bears the title Le Concept Ac Anito dans le monde Tranition vers the two comparative des religions ethnic Austronesians. Toward a comparative study of the ethnic Austronesian religions. Unfortunately, this valuable study is still unpublished in the Philippines due to the fact that it was written in French language. Zusa Taiza is a Filipino historian anthropologist and philosopher of history best known in pioneering an emic perspective in Philippine history called Pantayong Pananaw or the We Perspective, earning him the title Father of New Philippine Historiography. Jesus Salazar is a Filipino historian and proponent of Pantayong Pananaw, a self-reflective view in the study of Philippine history. He finished his BA in History at the University of the Philippines Diliman and his PhD in Ethnology at Sorbonne University in Paris, France. In each ending spiel, we quote Sus Zelazar who said, Ang kasaysayan ay mga salaysay na maisaysay. Kasaysayan, the Filipino equivalent term for history, are natives with meaning. Both words could mean saysay in Filipino too. Salazar returned to the Philippines after his rigorous schooling in Paris and joined the faculty of UP Department of History where he taught for 30 years. From the beginning of his teaching career in 1969, he used Filipino as a medium of communication continuing a practice initiated by his mentor Guadalupe Forrest Ganzon in 1965. Salazar would emerge as one of the main figures in the indigenization movement at UP Diliman, particularly in the College of Social Sciences and Philosophy, where he worked closely with like-minded people. He would also become a founding member of Pamansang Samahan sa Psikolohiyang Pilipino, which was founded in 1975, alongside Enriquez, Covar, Leonardo Mercado, and others. Because of his gigantic imprint in the Philippine Academia, many institutions grant him academic awards and honors. The most recent prestigious award conferred upon him is the Board Resolution recognizing Zeus Salazar as the prime mover of the Pan-Malayan identity given by the Philippine Historical Association at the 4th, International Conference of the International Council for Historical and Cultural Cooperation Southeast Asia on September 14, 2017. Two fest shrifen were also written in honor of him in 2015. Pantayong Pananaw, Pagyabong ng Talastasan, Pagbubunyi kay Zeus A. Salazar. And towards a Filipino history, a fest shrift for Zeus Salazar. As of 2019, Salazar is the writer of 32 authored, co-authored, edited books, and 125 articles published in various books and journals. Some of his works included anthropology, historical linguistics, archaeology, psychology, Asian history, Philippine history, biography, translation works, film studies, and poems. His explanations and expositions of Pantayang Pananaw can be found in the anthology of his essays, 
collected by former students and published under the title Pantay Yung Pananaw, Ugat at Kabuluhan. Having no sense of retirement, Salazar currently works for the publication of five more books on different topics. One on the Muslim participation in the Katipunan Revolt in Mindanao. One on the place of Pantayong Pananao in the Cato Solve System of Education in the Philippines, completed in 2017. One on Baybayin and on Tubutu and artifacts located in the museum in Tipolo, both written with Jeronimo Cristobal. And another one on the period of Pamayanan, Philippine history before 1588. In 2000, Salazar retired from UP at the age of 66, having the rank of Professor 12, the highest professional rank in UP. The retirement of Salazar, as well as the change of administration in the College of Social Sciences and Philosophy in general, and in the Department of History in particular, brought calamity in Pantayong Pananaw as a school of thought in UP. Some of those who hold leadership started what can be considered as an ideological persecution which lead to the diaspora of Pantayong Pananaw proponents acted the Department of History. Many of them took refuge in the Department of Filipino in UP as well as the History Department of the La Salle University which can be considered as bastion of Pantayong Pananaw, majority of its faculty being former students and mentor by Salazar himself. Even after he left UP, Salazar did not really retire from teaching. He was invited to teach a Department of Psychology in the La Salle University, where he taught for 2000 to 2005. In 2018, at the age of 84, he accepted invitation of Raul Roland Sebastian, then chairperson of the Department of History, to teach Polytechnic University of the Philippines, where he taught two consecutive semesters handling historiography and philosophy of history courses. These classes gave birth to a series of eight books in historiography. After the martial law years, Pantayang Panana would gain an upper hand in the historical discourse of UP, following the rise of Salazar as the chairperson of the History Department, the office that he will occupy from 1987 to 1989. It is in this colloquium that Salazar expressed his dreams of having a 50-volume or more collections of documents in Philippine history like that of Blair and Robertson written in the Filipino language. He only served as a chairperson for two years since he was appointed as the Dean of the College of Social Sciences and Philosophy from 1989 to 1992. Together with Govar, Salazar changed the name of the program PhD Philippine Studies into PhD Filipinologia or Filipinology, which also changed the perspective employed in the study of the field. It was in the 1970s that his conflict with President Ferdinand Marcos began. This conflict escalated when Salazar became a major participant in an uprising in UP, historically known as the Liman Commune. Some years after his release, the writings of the multi-volume history book commissioned by Marcos would begin. This would be a source later on of polemics against Salazar. But some defended him, asserting that instead of looking at the events as Marcus using Salazar, it is more appropriate to treat this as Salazar using Marcus. Salazar himself would argue, in a heated debate with Patricio Abinales, that it does not matter who would commission the writing of a Philippine history book, be it Marcus, Estrada, or Aquino, as long as it is done for national building, then it is justified. The horizontal view is a concept and inferred by the historian Dr. Jose Salazar, who aspired to an independent discourse of the Filipinos in the national language for history and social science. According to Salazar, history is a story about the past that has significance for a historical group of people or generation. Salazar explained that the Filipino language is more than a simple indicator communicator, and coordinator of history, because it is where culture and experience circulate. 
It is also said to be useful as a storage or source of history. It is believed that history was understood as open and forthright in the burden of interpretation, significance, and significance through the national language. The Filipino language is a Filipino of history and can be considered as a power that liberates the people.